Hi there. Uh, today, let me explain you on oxygen dissociation curve, both for hemoglobin and myoglobin. Okay, so in order to explain oxygen dissociation curve, so let me draw a figure here. So I'm drawing x axis and y axis. So the x axis, so the partial pressure of oxygen, this is PO2 in millimeter of Hg, millimeter of mercury. So I'll write it from 10 to 100. So it varies from 10 millimeter of Hg to 100 millimeter of Hg. So within this, so let me just uh, make two tissues and that is one is the lungs. So I'll write that part here. So lungs and the partial pressure of lungs will be between 90 millimeter of Hg to 100 millimeter of Hg. And the other tissue that I would like to write here is the peripheral tissues. The peripheral tissue partial pressure of oxygen, it varies from 20 millimeter of Hg to 40 millimeter of Hg. Okay, on the y-axis, so I'll write two points. One point is like 50%, that is this is the percent saturation, 50%, and the other will be 100%. That's 100% saturation with the oxygen molecule. Okay, now let's take uh, two examples here. One is the myoglobin and the other is hemoglobin. As you all know that myoglobin is, it has got one single polypeptide chain and it has got a tertiary structure. And each myoglobin molecule has got one heme group. So it means it can bind with one oxygen molecule. Whereas the hemoglobin, as you all know, it has got four subunits, two adult hemoglobin especially. It has two alpha and two beta subunits. Each subunit will carry one molecule of hemoglobin. It means it can means one molecule of heme and it can bind with one molecule of oxygen. It means since we have four subunits, four heme groups, it means each molecule each hemoglobin can bind with four molecules of oxygen. Okay? So so I'll now draw the oxygen association curve and oxygen dissociation curve. So here is the oxygen dissociation and association curve for hemoglobin. It goes something like this. So one in green color is a curve for hemoglobin and it is sigmoidal. So you all need to remember, see the oxygen dissociation curve for hemoglobin is sigmoidal. Now let me draw oxygen dissociation curve for myoglobin and the oxygen dissociation curve for myoglobin goes something like this. Okay, so and it's a hyperbola. So the myoglobin oxygen dissociation curve is hyperbola whereas for hemoglobin it is sigmoidal. These are the two things that you really need, need to remember first. Okay. Now let me explain you oxygen dissociation curve for hemoglobin first and this is hemoglobin HbA this is for adult hemoglobin and this is for myoglobin that is hyperbolic curve. Now let's consider lungs first. Partial pressure of oxygen in lungs as I already told you before it is 90 to 100 millimeter of Hg and this is in peripheral tissues and the partial pressure of oxygen is between 20 to 40 millimeter of Hg. Okay, at 100 millimeter of Hg, that is 90 to 100 millimeter of uh, mercury in the lungs, so especially in the alveoli, so there is a high partial pressure of oxygen. Now your red blood cells, which are there in the pulmonary circulation, when you inspire oxygen, you are, partial, you are maintaining partial pressure at 90 to 100 millimeter of Hg, so your hemoglobin molecule will be completely saturated, means 100% saturated because all the four oxygen binding sites in hemoglobin is occupied with oxygen. It means full saturation, 100%. That's what is shown here. So if you correspond this line, so it will come to 100%. It means your red blood cell, means hemoglobin in red blood cell contain four oxygen molecule. That is 100% saturated there. Now what we will do is, we will bring that RBC from pulmonary circulation into systemic circulation. From, from pulmonary vasculature coming into the systemic circulation, it means in the tissues. 
okay what happens in the tissues so as the red blood cells are moving from lungs to these rbcs are moving from lungs to the peripheral tissue okay so and in the peripheral tissue especially when the partial pressure of oxygen is 40 here the peripheral tissue higher end of partial pressure of oxygen is 40 so this low partial pressure itself comparatively from 90 you need to look at 40 this, this is the lower partial pressure so at lower partial pressure this low partial pressure itself will unload oxygen from hemoglobin molecule it means one of the subunit will release oxygen so when one subunit is releasing oxygen it means that particular subunit will undergo conformational change because it has released oxygen so it is going to get into t state of uh, hemoglobin slowly it is getting into t state means one subunit when it releases oxygen it is going to induce the neighboring subunit because of this conformational change it's going to induce the neighboring subunit to release oxygen molecule so it means another molecule of oxygen will also be released okay so this is what happens under normal condition under basal condition when someone is not doing exercise or just like resting relaxing so only two molecules of oxygen will be released from hemoglobin molecule rest two of them out of four we are we have carried means four oxygen molecules bound to hemoglobin and only two are released rest two are not released under basal condition okay and that is what is 50 percent saturation it means 50 percent at 50 percent so uh, that is a, that is what is referred as p50 P50 for adult hemoglobin is 26 millimeter of Hg. 26 millimeter of Hg. At 26 millimeter of Hg, only two molecules of oxygen released from hemoglobin molecule. Now, when the rest of those two molecules will be released? So, if somebody gets like start doing exercise, at that time what happens? There is a demand for oxygen because electron transport chain will be running faster there is more demand for oxygen respiratory rate increases and also whatever the two hemoglobin oxygen molecules still bound to hemoglobin after releasing these two they will also start releasing into the tissues okay so when the partial pressure of oxygen falls below 26 millimeter of hg say consider that say at 20 millimeter of hg one more molecule of oxygen released from hemoglobin okay and if the person continues to do activity, say falls into 15 millimeter of Hg, partial pressure of oxygen, so probably another molecule of oxygen is also unloaded from hemoglobin. So like this, depending on the partial pressure here, so there will be unloading of oxygen. But this unloading of oxygen is not only dependent on partial pressure, lower partial pressure of oxygen, it is also helped by some other factors. And what all those factors? It all depends on the pH of the tissue. It means what is the hydrogen ion concentration in the tissues, what is the carbon dioxide concentration in the peripheral tissues, and also how much is the 2,3 BPG in the red blood cell. All those factors will help in the unloading of oxygen. I'm going to explain you on that in Bohr effect in other video. I have already, uh, yeah, there, there is a video in my YouTube channel, which is a Bohr effect. So you can watch that video to understand what is the other factors other than partial pressure of oxygen which helps in the unloading of oxygen okay anyway to continue from here consider that these molecules of uh, like one molecule of oxygen released from hemoglobin at 40 millimeter of hg partial pressure tissue partial pressure so and it means person is resting one molecule release another molecule release p50 is 26 millimeter of hg person is resting basal condition he doesn't really need that much oxygen during that time what happens some of the released oxygen will be taken up by myoglobin because myoglobin is present in the static tissue like skeletal muscle cardiac tissue it cannot go to the lungs and bring oxygen so who is going to bring oxygen for myoglobin it is the red blood cell containing hemoglobin brings oxygen release in the peripheral tissue same oxygen is taken up by the skeletal muscle bound, uh, bound myoglobin molecule myoglobin now stores oxygen that is why under partial pressure of tissues 20 to 40 millimeter of hg as you can see the myoglobin curve here it is almost 100 percent saturated it means it's going to take the released oxygen and store it now what is the function of this myoglobin 
myoglobin function is storage form of oxygen it stores oxygen when it's going to release this oxygen and that is it happens only when person is doing exercise these two when the partial pressure of peripheral tissue of partial pressure of oxygen of peripheral tissue falls below 26 mm of hg it means person is working out he is exercising so there is a demand for oxygen whenever there is a demand for oxygen so myoglobin start releasing oxygen okay and so as the partial pressure of oxygen in the peripheral tissue falls below 15 going into 10 so as you can see these teeth fall in this myoglobin cut it means it is starting to release oxygen so that is why myoglobin since it is a single subunit it has more affinity for oxygen and also to let you know that p50 for myoglobin is 2.8 millimeter of hg it means just 2.8 millimeter of mercury is oxygen partial pressure is needed to off saturate myoglobin whereas to do the same thing for hemoglobin it needs 26 millimeter of hg partial pressure it means myoglobin has got higher affinity for oxygen compared to hemoglobin adult hemoglobin okay that is why myoglobin is since it has more affinity it is holding on to oxygen until the time comes when the time comes means when the partial pressure of oxygen in the tissue falls myoglobin start releasing oxygen until that time it is going to hold on to the oxygen that is why myoglobin is more suitable for storing the oxygen whereas the hemoglobin since it has relatively less oxygen affinity and also it is there in the red blood cell so it can go to the lungs bring oxygen because it has more partial pressure there and when it comes to the peripheral tissue it is going to release oxygen because oxygen affinity of adult hemoglobin is relatively less okay that is why hemoglobin is suitable for transporting oxygen whereas the myoglobin is suitable for storage storing the oxygen thanks for watching